Westinghouse has announced the AP300, its first serious entrance into the small modular reactor market. This SMR is a 300 megawatt electric sibling to the much larger AP1000, and Westinghouse claims it's leveraging all of the technologies and lessons learned from the much larger counterpart. Of course, if you've been following the AP1000 story, you know that that's going to be a pretty tall order. However, it's still interesting to see how they've managed to take a lot of the design and features and put them into the smaller package. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds a lot like some of the other reactors out there, like GE's BWRX300 or NuScale. And you're right. The AP300 is joining the market a little bit late to the party, coming in two years after the BWRX300 and about a decade after NuScale. But being one of the largest designers in the world, it was expected that Westinghouse would make an announcement sooner or later. So we've got this newcomer entering a crowded market, with some stiff competition from already licensed and under construction designs. But the AP300 isn't without its own advantages. Westinghouse claims that it has a very small footprint, builds on the established AP1000 design, and has an experienced supply chain and construction process behind it. Now the big question on everyone's mind is, how does it stack up against its competitors? And can it survive in a crowded small reactor marketplace? Let's dive in and see what's in store for the Westinghouse AP300. Westinghouse has announced the AP300, a smaller version of its flagship AP1000 Generation 3 Plus pressurized water reactor design. The AP300 is a small modular reactor and, Westinghouse claims, is designed to compete in a crowded nuclear marketplace, leveraging its established development and operational experience. Now, this isn't exactly groundbreaking technology. The AP300 is a 300 megawatt electric reactor putting it in direct competition with other designs, like GE's BWRX300, NuScale's Voyager 4, and then maybe one day we'll see it newer design from EDF. But the AP300 is still a bit of a latecomer to the party, showing up two years after the BWRX300 and almost a decade after NuScale. But better late than never, so what sets the AP300 apart? After all, anyone looking for a 300 megawatt nuclear plant already has some pretty established and reliable choices available. Westinghouse describes it as a ultra-compact, modular constructed unit that builds on the innovation and operational knowledge of the AP1000 fleet. It's going to use identical AP1000 technology, including major equipment, structural components, passive safety systems, fuel, and INC systems. But this is what Westinghouse says makes it stand out, that it's the first SMR based off of an nth-of-a-kind operating plant, meaning that they're hoping to benefit from the fact that the technology from the AP1000 has already received regulatory approval from the US, the UK, and China, as well as being in compliance with regulatory requirements in the European Union. Theoretically meaning that finalizing and licensing the design will be much simpler. In very simple terms, you can think of the AP300 as an AP1000, but with one loop instead of two. That means it's effectively reusing a lot of the systems, components, and equipment from the bigger design. The fuel is identical, and the constructability lessons learned should be the same. So while it's not quite a game changer, it's definitely something that should ease concerns about licensing and construction, which should appeal to any future potential customers. All right, let's dive deeper into the AP300. As we said, it's a compact single loop version of the larger 1100 megawatt AP1000 design. The technology and safety basis are the same, but the smaller size and single loop design make it distinct from its larger counterpart. Likewise, the AP300 uses the same passive safety systems and design that are used in the larger AP1000. Regulators in the US and China have already reviewed and approved these designs, confirming that they meet the necessary safety requirements. Now, Westinghouse claims that the AP300 is designed to be fail-safe, meaning that it can achieve and maintain a safe shutdown condition without external power, operator action, or pumps. Its passive approach to safety means it eliminates the need for backup power and cooling supplies, although at this point the company hasn't specified for how long. Westinghouse also claims the AP300 offers several benefits over its competitors, including technology readiness, licensing certainty, an established supply chain, and modular construction. But here we have to question, is it really a small modular reactor? Westinghouse says it has a footprint of 25% of an international soccer field, meaning the AP300 is significantly smaller than several other SMRs under development. However, the definition of modularity might be somewhat questionable. There are certainly components and sections of the design that can be built in a factory and then installed at the site, but the plant will still need to rely extensively on traditional construction techniques. And as we saw with the AP1000, supposedly modular construction doesn't always go smoothly. 
For fuel, the AP300 uses advancements in nuclear fuel technology. Using low-enriched uranium, it will use Westinghouse's Advanced Dope Pellet Technology, or ADOPT, an accident-tolerant fuel technology designed to improve the fuel cycle economics and enhance safety. The fuel has small amounts of chromia and alumina added, which generally improves the energy extraction and mechanical properties of the fuel. Interestingly though, the AP300 is not Westinghouse's first SMR offering. In 2011, they rolled out a 225 megawatt integral SMR design modeled on the AP1000 that eliminated large loop piping. However, the US Department of Energy chose to invest federal funds in new scale power over Westinghouse and other designs. In January 2014, after failing to find customers and admitting that it could not justify the economics of its SMR without government subsidies, the company announced it would scale back its SMR program in the US. Now, the most obvious competitor to the AP300 is GE's BWRX300 design. Both reactors are derived from their larger counterparts, using similar components and approaches. The AP300 comes from the AP1000, while the BWRX300 comes from the economic simplified boiling water reactor. Both designs have previously received NRC design certification and use normal light water for cooling and moderation, as well as slightly enriched uranium fuel. While the AP300 is a pressurized water reactor, or PWR, meaning it has two separate heat transfer loops with a steam generator that then leads to an electrical generator, the BWRX300 is a boiling water reactor, meaning that it directly produces steam that goes to the electric generator. Both of these designs are well understood and are the two most popular types that we see around the world. Both designs are also Generation 3 Plus, meaning they incorporate substantial passive safety systems in the design. The BWRX300 claims seven days without power or operator action, while the AP300 also claims safe shutdown without power or operator action, but at this point has not specified for how long. The larger AP1000 can last for three days, so presumably the smaller AP300 would have similar performance, if not better. The BWRX is currently undergoing a joint regulatory review by Canada's CNSC and the US Nuclear Regulatory Commission. While the AP300 has submitted pre-licensing documents to the US NRC, no formal regulatory review has started yet. Both designs are also a bit of a stretch of the term SMR, using a mix of modular construction and traditional techniques. The AP300 claims it will be less than 25% of a football field in size. However, the BWRX300 also claims to be about the size of a football field. So this might just be some variation in defining of where the actual footprint of the plant starts and ends. In terms of deciding factors, both reactors have the same power output and don't have any big departures from traditional designs, but instead make incremental improvements. And importantly on cost, both reactors are expected to be around $1 billion each. So what's Westinghouse's plan to enter a relatively crowded nuclear market several years after the others? Essentially, the company claims it has a technological advantage and an existing supply chain. However, it's probably a bit of a stretch to try and make those claims, considering the similarities between the two designs. Despite stiff competition, Westinghouse is confident in its ability to gain a foothold in the SMR market, citing its existing technology licensing and supply chain. The company says it is in discussion with the NRC and potential customers for the AP300. This is a big area that Westinghouse is using to push to customers that they should choose its design, that it has the experience now from building its AP1000 reactors. And to this, maybe yes and maybe no. Now, I'm not in the Westinghouse marketing department, but I would think that any reference to the world's most over-budget nuclear project in history would be something to avoid. But credit where credit is due, at least they're addressing the elephant in the room. And at least it has plans built on a similar design. GE got the ESBWR design certified, but never actually constructed it. Like other companies marketing SMRs, Westinghouse is putting a focus on decarbonizing manufacturing and energy sectors. The company aims to deploy the first AP300 within the next decade, targeting NRC certification by 2027 and deployment soon after, a timeline that aligns with other SMR schedules. To address the challenges of delays and cost overruns, Westinghouse says it is optimizing the AP300's design and learning from its past experiences on the AP1000 projects. The company envisions that an AP300 plant could be constructed within three years. And with a 300 megawatt capacity, the AP300 is suitable for brownfield sites, where it could replace aging coal plants. Its smaller size and lower overall cost may also make it more attractive, despite the potentially higher levelized cost of electricity compared to large reactors. Westinghouse is targeting markets where new nuclear power can be justified, such as state-owned utilities in Europe. 
The U.S. market might present more challenges due to increased competition from natural gas and renewable sources, as well as regulatory hurdles. On costs, David Durham, president of Westinghouse Energy Systems, said this isn't going to be too cheap to meter or equivalent to the cost of a gas plant. AP300s are going to cost more, but the benefit you're going to have is low cost production, low cost energy for the life of the plant, the 60 or 100 years that it's going to operate, and it's going to be very predictable. For one, you don't have the fluctuations that you have in gas, and obviously you don't have the carbon impacts that you get with gas or coal. Like other SMRs of this size, the AP300's potential to serve as a reliable source of low carbon energy with minimal environmental impacts could make it an attractive option for countries looking to reduce their carbon emissions. By providing a steady supply of electricity without the price volatility of fossil fuels or fluctuations of renewables, the AP300 could prove to be a valuable asset in the transition to a cleaner energy future. So what can we expect from the AP300? At this point, it's probably too early to tell, as we haven't seen any official customers or submissions to any regulatory bodies. We'll just have to see if Westinghouse's late entry into the SMR market can still pay off. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different style of video. If you loved it or hated it, please just let me know. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.